Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to discuss system calls in assembly language. System calls are like special functions that allow programs to interact with the operating system. They act as an interface between the program and the core part of the operating system, which is the kernel space. In the previous lessons, in the code examples, we have used two system calls, sys underscore write to write to the screen and sys underscore exit to exit the program. We can make use of the Linux system calls in our assembly programs. We need just to follow those steps. So the first step would be to put the system call number in the EAX register. This number identifies which system call you want to use. Then you can store the arguments for the system call in registers like EBX, ECX, EDX, etc. These registers hold the values you want to pass to the system call. Next, you can call the kernel by triggering a special interrupt, which is int 0 by 80. And the int opcode 0 by 80 in the x86 architecture, that int 0 by 80 instruction is used to trigger a software interrupt, specifically interrupt number 0 by 80, that's a hexadecimal number. When this instruction is executed, it transfers control from the user space to the kernel space as we said. And this is done to request a specific service or operation from the operating system. And finally, the result of the system call is usually returned in the EAX register. That is, as you can see on the screen, number 4, which is sys underscore write. That's a system call number, of course, which is used to write to the screen. Let's check the next slide. This table shows some of the system calls that are going to be used in this video. Sys underscore exit, which is number one in the accumulator register. And number four is to write. I'm sure by now you are quite familiar with sys underscore exit and sys underscore write. That is one and four respectively. Also, there are other instructions such as sys underscore fork, sys underscore read, underscore open and underscore close. But for those of you who are not familiar with sys underscore exit or sys underscore write, let me tell you briefly what are those. So sys underscore exit is used to exit the program. That is all it is. The code sets the system call number EAX to 1 and then triggers the kernel interrupt with int 0 by 80. Also the sys underscore write, which is used to write messages to the screen, so the most important thing in this lesson that you should know that these system call numbers are used to allow the program to interact with your operating system. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start writing our program that will show you how we can use the Linux system calls in our assembly programming. Welcome back. I'm inside my Ubuntu terminal. I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux. And the reason for that is most of you guys are using Windows on a daily basis. So you can install the WSL for your Windows system. If you don't know how to do that, make sure to check out my video on how to install WSL on your Microsoft Windows. I'm going to assume now that you're inside your Ubuntu terminal. If you want to check your architecture, simply you can type arg and you will get the answer x8664. First of all, we will need to install NASM. If you are first time working with your Ubuntu terminal, you will need to do the same step that I'm going to do now. So you will type sudo apt get install NASM. NASM stands for NetWide Assembler. That's the kind of the assembler that we are using in order to assemble our program and run it. All right, awesome. So let me now go to my home directory. And inside my home directory, I want to create a folder. I'm going to call it sys call num. And I'm going to use NeoVim to open the file. You can alternatively use nano if you want. You can use vim if you want. But in my case, I'm going to use new Vim. Vim comes pre-installed, the same thing with Nano, 
but for new vim you will need to install it okay so let me just create that file i'm going to call it num.asm and before starting our program, I wanted just to write that comment or that multi-line comment about NASM or NetWide Assembler. Maybe you're quite new to this, so I want to make sure that you understand those small nuances. So we are working with NASM, which is the NetWide Assembler. And as you can read on the screen, it says here that it's a popular assembler that is used for writing low-level assembly language code. It's a free and open source assembler that supports a variety of x86 and 64 architectures. x86 only, that means the 32-bit architecture, which is the one that we are working with currently, or the one on which we are demonstrating our, um, our code. NASM is widely used for developing software, system programming, and operating system development. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and start writing our program. And the first thing I will need to write is the data segment that starts by section dot data. Then here I want user message defining byte or define byte and the message itself. Here I will say, please enter a number. The next thing that I want is the length of the message. So the length of the message is going to be calculated as the difference between the, um, the current address, which is um, represented by the dollar sign, and the address of the user message. So to do that, I will say len user message equ, which is equal to the current address minus the user message variable, user message. Okay, and let me just add here a few comments. Then what I want is to display that message. So this message, again, defining byte, and we'll say here you have entered and whatever the number that the user is going to enter. And then again, we'll say len, um, that's, uh, I, I misspelled that, disp, okay, display message. And also I want the length of the displayed message that is equal to the uh, current address minus the displayed message. Okay, let me just save that. The next thing that I want to do is to define the uninitialized data segment BSS, where the num variable is going to be reserved with a size of five bytes. To do that, I'm going also to start by the keyword section dot BSS. Then I will say here num RESB. And RESB here is a directive in assembly language that is commonly used in NASB and other assemblers. It's short for reserve bytes. And we said that we want to reserve five bytes for that number. To get a little bit technical here, that RESB directive is used to allocate a block of memory in the program's data or BSS, which is the uninitialized data sections. After that, we will need the text segment and the text segment is going to contain the actual code for our program. And this is the code segment here. And as always, we'll do global underscore start. And what comes after is the actual code for our program. So basically, underscore start is the entry point of the program. Let's start by our first system call, which is going to be sys underscore write. To do that, we're going to have our opcode move EAX. And we want to move to that register number four. So this is simply a sys underscore write. Number four, if you remember in our table, pertains to sys underscore write. And don't worry, this file is going to be heavily commented in the source code in my GitHub repository. But for now, I want to set the file descriptor to one, which is the standard output. So move to EBX, which is the base register number one. 
and number one is the standard output. Also, I want the address of the user message to be in the ECX. So I'm going to move the user message to the ECX register. And that's actually going to set the address of the user message to write. Next, I want to set the length of the user message. Then we want to perform a system call by calling the kernel with the int 0 by 80 int 0 x 80. And int stands for interrupt. And that's going to call the kernel to perform the system call as we said. The second system call here is going to be sys underscore read. So uh, let me just add a comment here. That's going to read and store the user input. Let me just delete this and I will add that comment here. We'll say here, write the user input. So I want to set the system call number to three, which is read. So move to the accumulator register again, number three, and that is sys underscore read. Maybe I need to write also here a comment that's sys underscore write. Next, I want to set the file descriptor to two, which is the standard input. Okay. And that's opposed to EB and that's opposed to not and that's opposed to number one, which was set to standard output. Okay, so move EBX to the next I want to set the address to store the user input. To do that, I'm going to use the ECX register to move in it the num. Then I want to set the maximum number of bytes to read, which is five. So I'm going to move number five to the EDX or to the data storage register. That's the five bytes that we want to store in the EDX register. Next, I want to uh, again call the kernel to perform a system call using int zero by 80. The third system call here is going to be another sys underscore write. So uh, let's type here, write another message. So that's going to be very similar to the first system call block that we have written. So move EAX4, move to the ECX or the counter um, register, the displayed message. Um, next, we want to move to EDX, which is the data register, the length of the displayed message. And that simply is going to set the length of the display message. Um, finally, we are going to interrupt 0x by 80. Uh, that's the, the, the kernel to perform the interruption or the system call to interrupt the system. All right, great. And um, the fourth system call, yet again, it's going to be another right um, system call. So write the number itself. So uh, again, moving to the accumulator register, number four to write. Again, I'm doing that silly mistake. I'm adding E to move. That is a op code. So move number one, which is the standard out to the base, um, the base register number one which is the standard output, move to the counter register, the num itself. So we're going to set the address of the number to write. And um, we're going to also set the length of the number itself, which is five. We are setting the length, which is five bytes. Um, and uh, again, finally, we will do the zero by 80 to interrupt the system to, to call the kernel. All right, so I hope this is clear enough for you guys. And finally, our code is going to set up the system call for sys underscore exit. So here I'm going to say exit program. So what I want to do here is to move um, one to EAX. 
and here we are setting the system call number to one to exit the program. And next we are moving to the base register zero. So move to EBX. And this is simply the exit status. So the exit status here is zero. So that might be new to you. This is the exit status zero. And um, again, we are going to say int zero by 80 to interrupt and exit the program totally. And let's go ahead and try our program. So what I want to write now is NASM flag F ELF 64 flag O for output. And we'll call it num dot O num dot ASM. And we have an error that's in line one. Let's go ahead and check again our program. That is the first line. Okay, let's delete all that. Um, and let's go ahead and try that again. Okay, so we have another error. That's um, a syntax error on line 32. Let's try that again. Okay, perfect. So let's check by doing the list command. So we have num.asm and num.o. Okay, so let's do now the linker by using the ld command. And I will say num.o and the output is going to be num. Now, if we'll check, you will find that the executable you'll find that the executable file num in green has been assembled. Now to run our program, we'll do dot slash num. Please enter a number, let's say two. You have entered two. Perfect, our program has worked perfectly. I hope our system calls lesson was clear to you. Please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. In the next lesson, we are going to study addressing modes.